I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty nineteen Volkswagen GTIs. Rabbit Edition DSG versus manual. So what is the Rabbit Edition? The Rabbit is now the middle trim. They gave it a fancy name. And a little decal on the back. Yeah, pretty much. Also, you say deco weird. It's decal. It's both. You may have watched our previous video, Golf Art, manual versus DSG. That seemed to do well. You guys really liked that. So we brought you back GTI's Rabbit Editions. Horsepower and torque. 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque for both of them. And is that the same as last year? It's actually not. They gave it more horsepower than last year and more horsepower than the previous year, so this actually has 18 more horsepower than it did two years ago. And before we get on with the review, what is the real competition of the GTI? Because the Veloster N is out now, the Focus ST doesn't exist anymore, but I want to include that. I want to know where everything falls and like the Elantra GTN line and all that stuff. But mostly, is the GTI competition with the Veloster N or the Veloster Turbo? It's between both because of the way Hyundai priced the N. So Hyundai did an amazing job of positioning that car. And I posted a picture today, Veloster N versus GTI. Which one would you take on my Instagram? Follow us, Yuri Teresh in the Straight Pipes. And so many people picked the GTI over the Veloster N, which drives me crazy. Yeah, I do agree with you. Veloster N versus GTI, I 100% agree I would take the Veloster N. Veloster Turbo versus GTI, I would absolutely take the GTI. Yeah, but like, I feel like people don't realize how good the Veloster N is yet. We'll work on that. We'll compare it to the Type R later and let everyone really know what's going on. Yeah, people actually have no idea. It's a really good car. Anyways, we'll talk about the Veloster N and the Veloster N review. Let's talk about the GTIs. So I'm in the manual. This transmission is so good. Love this transmission for this car. I'm gonna spoil it right away. This is the proper transmission for the GTI. Is the manual transmission in the GTI better than the manual transmission in the SI? I think they're both really good, but this one feels slightly more rubbery than the one in the SI. The SI was like really notchy, kind of feels like you're using like a metal hammer versus like a rubber mallet in this one. Yeah, I prefer the SI a little bit more, but the manual transmission is very good. And then we've got DSG in the car that I'm driving which is so boring, yawn fest. I disagree with Yuri, but this is still the better transmission. That DSG is one of the fastest shifting transmissions you can get in this class. It's just not exciting to drive. Like maybe the Golf R with paddles, that's kind of acceptable. But in this, just like, give me the manual. It's too slow for automatic. Exactly, I agree with you. For the Golf R, for sure. That's why I said I would want the DSG in the Golf R and the manual in the GTI. But this clutch in the GTI is like, it's completely fine for traffic. There's no issues driving this every day. Yeah, but you should also get the manual in the Golf R. Like that was like really fun. It was really fun. I just think the DSG is better because that one also had launch control. Yours does not have launch control in the DSG GTI. So for you, better is faster, not necessarily more fun and engaging. I like faster and more engaging, but I am not that much more engaged with the Golf R with the manual. Okay, I'm much more engaged with three pedals at all times, so maybe that's where like our preferences lie. Because it seems kind of like I always want the manual and you only want the auto when it's like way faster. Exactly, that's 100% how I think. Like the G70 manual versus the auto, I really wanted the manual because the difference wasn't that, that big. And you may have noticed one is gray and one is blue. And the blue one we took a photo of at the LA Auto Show got like the most likes of anything at the LA Auto Show on Instagram. Yeah, that was huge. That is Cornflower Blue and this is Urano Gray. And you can only get these in the Rabbit Edition, but we'll get to the Rabbit Edition stuff in a couple seconds. And before we get into the Rabbit Edition stuff, let me talk about these dinky little plastic paddles. They are so tiny and so not engaging for a DSG transmission. Like compared to everything Mercedes does with their metal paddles, like that would make it a lot more fun. Yeah, Volkswagen and Audi do not like metal paddles for some reason. Every time I click the paddles, I'm like, ah, oh, I'll just leave it in drive or sport shifting drive. And how is that in auto, just leaving it in auto? Yeah, when you leave it in drive, it's kind of all right. It takes a while to downshift when you floor it, but we got different drive modes, which changes all that up. I've been keeping it in eco most of the time. Yeah, I can't deal with eco in either of these. And new for this year for the DSG, you actually have a seven speed, whereas it was a six speed before, which I believe is directly from the Golf R now. The Golf R felt a lot better though. Like we even got the farts out of the Golf R one, didn't we? Yes, we did. And the other thing that both of these get now are the Golf R brakes. So every GTI gets it, the Autobahn, the Rabbit, and the Base. Yes, they do. And every GTI now has a mechanical LSD. Great job, Volkswagen. Yeah, you can really feel the difference going through U-turns and little turns and stuff like that. It's pretty nice. I don't know if it's better than the SI's LSD. I actually fully agree with you. I don't think this is as good as the one in the SI. That one felt like razor sharp 
pull you through corners no problem. This one struggles a bit. It might have to do with the traction control system as well. Yeah, and also the tires. We should definitely do a full summer track test, which is front wheel drive LSD cars, I think. Yeah, and we're on winter tires because we're just getting out of winter, so we're just waiting for that final spring push. But these are the same Continental tires that we had at the Four Motion event, so watch that video. So let's talk about the Rabbit differences. You can't get a sunroof in the Rabbit editions. And then the exterior stuff, you basically get black wheels, black mirrors, and then you get a little black VMAX lip on top of your little lip spoiler to go maximum speed for some reason. And all the spoilers are black. And that's it for the outside. Inside, we have floor mats with red piping, but we have the winter mats, so we don't actually have those. And you always get the traditional Clark cloth Volkswagen seats. However, the Rabbit gets a little badge on the side, just like a little thing like uh, Ikea did. I mean, <laughs> Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that decal on the back we forgot to mention. Oh yes, on the outside. Which looks kind of cheap. It's just like a sticker. They could have been like a real badge, I agree. Speaking of rabbits, I have a pet rabbit. Rabbits are the best pet. Here's some highlights of my rabbit being cute. I think dogs are the best pet, but I'll give it to you if we're in a rabbit. All right, Yuri, I know how much you're itching for manual, so let's switch it up. For sure, finally, finally, get some excitement back into these feet. I forgot, this one has the golf ball looking shifter. The Golf R did not have that. Look how much more excited he is now. It's so much more fun. This is definitely way more engaging, and the pedals are good too. The pedal placement, I can heel toe in this. This is the fun one, the Manuel. For sure, the pedals are placed better in that GTI than they were in the SI for me. Okay, now let's get to Cliche Corner, test these things out, but let's start with the interior on the way. One thing I remember hating about golfs, the steering wheel column always gets way too close to my knees and sometimes hits my knees. I haven't had that problem this time, but I have had in the past, so I'm just gonna stay neutral on that one. Now let's talk about these seats. They are the most obvious part of this interior. Love them. I'm also wearing a shirt, so I'm not sure if you can actually see me in this interior blending in with them. I'm not really too stoked on these seats. I feel like there's not enough support up at the top on the back, but the leather seats might be more comfortable because they were more comfortable in the Volkswagen Beetle Wolfsburg that we drove compared to the cloth ones. I think these are super well bolstered. I find them super comfortable. Even on a long trip, I wouldn't have any problem with these. And our lumbar support is manual on the sides. Forward and back is manual, but we've got electric tilting your back. So if you're sharing it with the spouse who's a different size, might not be the best option for saving presets because there are none. And the steering wheel is really nice. The leather feels great. However, there's still too many buttons on here. There's too many up, down, left, right. It's still confusing to get in here. Yeah, you get used to it, but there's no consistency in the buttonness. And then we both have adaptive cruise and it works really well. We do have lane keep assist and it works okay. It's good for not getting in the way while driving and just pushing you out if you lose track. Because some systems, like I think BMW, even if you get close to the edge of a lane, it'll like throw you right back in. Yeah, the system is good enough to get you to work, but you can't really rely on it like you can or like a lane centering system from Mercedes or something like that. And on the Rabbit, we don't have the full digital gauges. We've got the analog on the side with the digital in the middle. It'll show you your speed. It'll show you what gear you're in. But the gear shows up so small in the top right corner, I wish it was a little more prominent. Yeah, that doesn't bother me at all. I really like how clean the gauges are. Do you like how clean the piano black is around the gauges? Absolutely disgusting. And as for the rest of the interior, everyone always says the Volkswagen Golf interior is the best. Everyone's so like high on that. But I think a Veloster interior is pretty much just as good. I went to a Veloster N and checked it out. It did have more plastic than I remember. Here's a comparison of hard touch plastics on the Golf. compared to all the hard touch plastics on the Veloster N. I know what you're saying, but I still prefer this interior. It looks better. There is more gloss black, so I do hate that. However, overall, I think this interior just looks Better. I think the soft touch where you don't always touch is cool and I think some people value that but I don't. I prefer the tablet style infotainment higher so it's in your view, more hard buttons, a not piano black handbrake which I'm sure you love. Yeah that's disgusting. Come on Volkswagen. Yeah for me I don't buy the hype for the Volkswagen interiors but I do see why people like having soft materials everywhere. But the overall sense of quality in the interior is much higher in the GTI like everything just feels like it's well built, well put together, more solid. Yuri, does this pass the cup holder test? Obviously, it's a golf. Does it pass the visor test? Obviously, it's a golf. Three, Three two, two, one. One. And it didn't fly off. Full pass. That's the most important part. Yes, it did, like it did on my birthday two years ago. Like a year and a half ago, bro. Well, oh yeah. Box test.
We already know it fits nine. We're not going to show you that. Watch our GTR review. Watch our golf R review. But shout out to TeamNora.org, our new box test Patreon. Get your own box, patreon.com slash the straight pipes. And now let's get into the infotainment. Does it rewind satellite radio? No, it doesn't. And it's too low. I have to look down too much. It's got that stupid tuning knob that I need to click to confirm what radio station I go to. And then it's got piano black buttons for everything. See, I like that tuning knob. However, what I don't like is the friggin' volume button that still rotates. Click to confirm should be reserved for when you have a scroll wheel down at your armrest area. What's the difference where the scroll wheel is? Because for scroll wheels, click to confirm makes sense. Every tuning knob in the history of the world has been a go to that channel and it stays there. I just like seeing what's coming up next because there's no list view. Anyways, there's nothing really new about this infotainment. If you've seen any of our other Volkswagen reviews, it's exactly the same. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, works just fine. Now let's talk about these drive modes. So you hit the mode button, you got Eco, Comfort, Normal, Sport, and Custom. Just the way I want it. Yeah, the drive modes work like you'd expect, but what I notice is that you lose a lot of that pumped in audio when you go to Eco compared to Sport but you only hear the pumped in audio when you're steady revving up and putting power on the motor. Check this out. And I'll... Did you hear the difference there? And it's the most authentic sounding fake audio ever. Like the Edge ST is a joke compared to this. Yeah, it's good. Just leave it on. There's no real problem with it. The Edge ST is actually a joke compared to a lot of things. And both of these actually have adaptive dampers. So it actually makes a pretty decent difference going from comfort to sport. But normal to sport, normal to comfort is not that big of a difference. But it's not as big as a difference as like a Type R. These pull pretty hard. There's like a second of turbo lag and then it just goes. But it doesn't give you that same sensation of speed as the SI. Even though the SI has slightly less horsepower, it had more lag, so it was kind of more fun. To be honest, I think it's just enough power for a front wheel drive car that isn't super fancy with like Type R or N badging. Yeah, this is perfect for daily driving with a little bit of extra fun on the weekends. That's why these are like the go-to hot hatches. And I think people like the idea of German quality as well. So I guess let's dump these GTIs into Cliché Corner and see what we think about the handling. Full send. Okay, let's put this thing into sport, get the shifter into manual. Man, manual is so much more fun. Coming in too hot, hitting the brakes real hard, down shifting into second. That's my favorite part about Cliché Corner. There's not a lot of body roll. The suspension is actually really good. It's really well damped in every mode, especially in sport mode when you're sending it. But leaving it in comfort is probably the best thing for daily driving. It actually does make a pretty big difference. So if you're commuting, this is a perfect car for that. Turning is pretty good. It's not as sharp as the SI, but it's still good because we still have that mechanical LSD and it actually does make a pretty big difference from the electronic one that we had last year. It obviously understeers a bit. It's a front wheel drive car on winter tires. I don't know how much I can feel compared to a Golf without an LSD, but it does pull me through pretty well. I'm sure it'd be a lot better on summer tires though. Overall, this car handles really well. It's super comfortable. It's not too over the top in terms of like sport mode and it's also not too comfortable. It's just, it's just right. This is literally that just right car that everybody seems to get. Jacob, I just remembered something because I'm in the stick shift. What's that? The armrest kind of sucks in the automatic because you can't put your arm on the armrest and hold the steering wheel. But in the manual, you don't need it because you're always shifting. Oh yeah, it doesn't move forward like the SI did, I believe. SI was like, it moved forward, but it was like lower and almost always there. You could use the edge for the SI. But how was your, uh, how was your little boot through cliche corner? It was pretty fun, but I definitely missed that third pedal and actually just shifting. Yeah, I love coming into Cliché Corner way too fast, slamming the brakes and then getting a nice heel toe downshift right before I start turning. Yeah, you get a little bit of that brake initiation oversteer. It's just fun doing more things at once and being good at being able to handle more things at once. Did you feel any difference between that and the SI in terms of like the LSD and stuff? Nah, to be honest, like it's hard to test it out. I really want to do a test of a car with an LSD and without an LSD on summer tires on a track and really put it down in a nice visual so that everyone can see once and for all how much of a big difference it makes and for myself as well. I definitely noticed a difference, but I'm not sure if I can attribute it 100% to that LSD. It's probably that plus the traction control system. Okay, let's switch automatic and manual again, go through Cliché Corner, talk about the price, the competition, and finish off the review. Sounds good. And in automatic, as I expected, a lot less engaging, but still fast, maybe faster because I got less thinking to do. Wouldn't really stop me from getting the manual if I was a little bit slower though. And one final send into Cliché Corner, heel toe, downshift into second, and send. And it just grips, it's so much more fun than that DSG. Like, I actually feel like I have to do something, I'm working for it. Shift up into third. Yeah, I would, I would definitely, I've made up my mind, this is it. I made up my mind at the beginning of the video, now it's just reconfirmed. 
So how much does the Rabbit Edition cost? The manual starts at $33,995. The DSG starts at $35,395. They both have the driver assistance package, so total price $35,745 for the manual, $37,145 for the DSG. So obviously overall the manual wins because it's more fun, but let's talk about the competition. A Veloster N is like 35 grand Canadian, which is just in line with this in a manual. And a Veloster N is way cooler. It is, but the Veloster Turbo is technically what this competes with, but on price, definitely Veloster N. And then the Civic Si, which is under 30 grand, which is a way better deal than these. I think that was more fun than this, and it's got more features. It's got the rewinding satellite radio stuff too, and it comes in a two-door. Exactly, which is the reason that I would pick the Golf GTI because it's a two-door. I think this is a way more practical version. If you can get the SI in a hatch, I would probably go SI, but SI versus GTI, I'm going GTI because it's a hatch. And I'm going SI because it's more fun and more features. Then we come to the Focus ST, rest in peace. We don't have that anymore. I had so much more fun driving the Focus ST than this GTI. Maybe as much fun in the Focus ST as the Veloster N, but I'm not sure. I think the reason you had so much fun in that is because it had really sticky summer tires. We drove it in the summer. It was just a really good car at the time. However, that interior was so garbage compared to this. It was just plastic waterfalls, plastic on it, plastic on plastic. But the seat was more race car. The shifter was better. I couldn't heel toe with those pedals, but like, I remember having nothing but a good time. It was one of those cars that was so fun, the interior didn't matter, just like the 370Z Nismo. See, and I hated those seats, like probably the least comfortable seats I've ever sat in, and yeah, I couldn't heel toe it, so it wasn't that fun to do that, because I had to struggle to do it. And as for Civic Si versus Focus ST, I would take the Focus ST over the Civic Si because of the funness of that one. So disregarding the price, how about that automatic Mini Cooper JCW we reviewed like a year and a half ago, compared to the automatic GTI Golf. That one was way more fun, like no question more fun. It had a nicer interior, but I think I would still take the GTI. Mini JCW, everything for me. Man, like pop pops and everything, like even the paddles were more fun to use. The car itself was definitely more fun. I just think this is more practical. Maybe I just got older since that video. <laughs> so to summarize it, if you're gonna get a Golf GTI Rabbit, get the manual, that's the one we both pick. And if you're thinking about getting this compared to a Veloster N, Jacob? Get the Veloster N. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash The Straight Pipes and join our YouTube membership. And don't forget to check out our t-shirts on Teespring. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. This is a subscription break. Don't subscribe. forget to subscribe. Subscribe right now, subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that.